Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Jim mentioned, I'm Justin Elsass, Chief Data Officer for the City of Baltimore. Um, welcome to Charm City. Um, I'm trusting that Center for Government Excellence really ro rolled out the red carpet for y'all. Um, but I'm excited to talk to Mayor Brandon Scott here about how we how we use data in, in, uh, in Mayor Scott's administration. So before we get started, yeah. just want to make this clear: you can call Justin. Don't try to steal him. I <laughs> <laughs> Got to make that known. <laughs> Um, well, with that, um, so right out the gates, when you came into to office, uh, this was the end of 2021. Um, no, end of 2020. 20. Um, right out the gates, you wanted uh, the administration to create uh, your mayor's action plan. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about what that action plan was and how you identified priorities that would become part of that action plan? I think, Justin, you got to go back a little further. Uh, for me, right, and... I almost fell out of my chair when, when Beth said, like, mayor shouldn't be in deep down into the details. And I took the gym and said, I guess maybe I'm the exception to the rule. Uh, for me, I come to data from the, the standpoint of being a former staffer that worked in the city staff room, that did that work each and every day. And I always mix that with being a homegrown Baltimorean that lived in a city that I wasn't a data point that they cared about, uh, to my fellow mayor's point that, I was a, a person that didn't exist. I would never appear, appear on a board, right? So the way that I come into office is with the understanding that data is critically important. We have to set goals for ourselves. We have to use that data to influence everything that we do, but that every data point is a human. Every data point matters in the city. And the way that we wanted to put those things together was put our five things, the five core things that we wanted to focus on while we were mayor to do those things and work from there, right? Build in public safety, prioritize now use, clean and healthy communities, equitable neighborhood development, and responsible steward stewardship of city resources, also known as taxpayer dollars. And everything else comes from that. Uh, because if we want to make Baltimore for us, public safety is the number one priority for me, the safest city that we, that we can be, then we have to use that data. But I also have the, the history of knowing that data used the wrong way with the right, wrong, even with the right intentions or the wrong intentions, but not fully understanding what I said earlier about those data points being humans can lead to zero tolerance, mass incarceration, all the things that we've seen happen time and time again because folks were looking at just numbers and not numbers as people. And what we put forward for us was that action plan but also that we did it in ways that wasn't done before. We put it out there for the residents to see. They could track that action plan. They can see the things that we, we, can, we were doing. We allow for public input on these things so that it's not just me sitting up in City Hall, which I never do, by the way, sitting up in City Hall making these decisions. We're using that data to drive what we're doing in a smart, intelligent, equitable way that considers all things human and all things Baltimore. I appreciate that. Um, you know, one, one thing you, you started to, to raise there at the end was this idea of putting it out there. You can imagine coming into office, creating an action plan that you wanted to hold agencies to, but not necessarily needing to, to, pub, to, to publish it. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about why, you know, you, you, you mentioned transparency and the need to hold us accountable, but I'm, I'm particularly curious as, as, you know, we're all wrestling with you know, a, a lack of trust in government, a, a lack of understanding what truth is um, these days um, with so much um, information out there. How do you, how, how, how did that play into your thinking about why we need to publish this and, and, and about building trust in government? Well, I think, listen, uh, I had no rose colored glasses on to the role that I was coming in, right? I know the history of the broken trust that has happened with mayors of Baltimore in recent memory. So I knew that I was going to have to go above and far and beyond to even get to a chance to start to rebuild that trust, knowing that that trust would not be fully rebuilt in my term, or dare I say it, in two terms, right? But the only way residents are going to believe that you actually value them as a partner, value them as residents or business owners, is if you actually show them what you're doing, tell them what you're doing, and allow yourself to be held accountable in that each and every day. And that's also a part of uh, what I've been doing in government since I've been there, right? I'm the person that introduced, 11 years ago now, Baltimore's open data law, right? So this is just the evolution 
of my, of my public service, but also, again, learning the best practices, evolving them for Baltimore, and learning of the mistakes of the past. Because if I go out and set a goal that says, I want to decrease violent crime in Baltimore 15% a year, right? People are gonna look at me crazy, as they did, right? That's what they did. But if I don't do that, if I don't set a goal, if I don't say this is what we're gonna work for, no one that works for me and no one that's out in my city is gonna believe that we're actually working to solve the problem. Whatever the problem is, be it potholes, violent crime, third grade reading, how many bathrooms you replace in your school system, you have to set goals and do them publicly so that everyone can hold you accountable. Because even if you fall short of that goal, and when you're using data in the right way to show where you are and where you end up, people will respect you for being open and honest with them and not changing that, that, that honesty just because you didn't reach that goal. Um, can you talk a, a little bit about, so you, you know, describe putting out this action plan. I'm wondering if you can describe a little bit more kind of um, maybe at the, the tactical level, kind of how you use data to, to really monitor these goals, uh, monitor progress, that sort of thing. Well, sorry, Ben. I guess personally I probably do it a little bit more than folks would think I should, right? When, you, when we think about those KPIs, so we have KPIs for the, for the action plans. That's what's guiding not just me, but guiding the folks that work for me and my agency, my, my fabulous city administrative faith police, folks like yourself, Justin, who are helping us to push everybody that works to city government and know that if it's housing and it's decreasing the amount of vacant houses in Baltimore City, every single person that works in that agency, everything that they do is gonna be tied to how we're accomplishing that goal. If it's uh, our police department and we're talking about guns, for example, uh, one of the big data points that I'm always badgering them over the heads about the amount of guns we seize, but not just what we seize. What type of gun? Where they come from? Are they coming from the same gun dealer? Are they all ghost guns? All of these things so that they now know that at the highest level of government, this is how we're going to operate. We have to ask the tough questions. We have to be willing to push our folks to work because if not, government agencies and public servants, even the best public servants are gonna fall back on their norms and people are gonna coast. Uh, those who are always our high performers are gonna perform high, but those who just go with the ebbs and flows, if they are not tied to something that they can believe in, that they're a part of, that they can be held accountable to, they will just ride the wave. Or as has happened from mayor after mayor after mayor, we used to have folks who would tell mayors, I'm gonna be here where you, when you're gone because I just have to do whatever the basic job is. Those days have to be long gone for all of us. Every single employee has to be moving towards achieving the goals that you all set forward as the leader of the organization. Um, you know, the, the theme of what we're talking about is kind of empowering our, our employees to really engage with data. Um, I'm actually wondering kind of at a personal level how you typically engage with data. So, uh, in fact, we were just uh, a moment ago when we were waiting to come up, you asked for, um, you know, maybe another executive I knew, dashboard. I knew dashboard. So, <laughs> um, so how, how do you use that kind of information, that kind of real-time dashboard or your stat meetings? How are you kind of using those kinds of tools to, to make decisions? Well, I think it's, and we talked about this a little bit last year, it's a, because we are the birthplace of city stat and we know how we have to evolve. Like city stat used to be literally a session where the mayor and their chief of staff and the deputy mayor essentially would just scream, yell, and curse at all the agency heads. And why on earth they ever thought that folks would then go out there and work better after that, I have no idea. Uh, I've, I've asked them several times about that. But we've evolved now, and we now know it's about, yes, it's about accountability, but it's also about how we're working together as a team. Because the way that I use it sometimes, Justin, uh, well, you were there the other day, just, just on Monday in police that, is there are some things that come up in data from me asking those questions, like around uh, uh, Cash App. Have we talked to these folks? Have we done this? What other things have we done? Have we talked to like cities to see if they're having the same data points? I use data in a way that is, informs me not just in a way for me to just make basic decisions, right? About, yes, we need to focus in this area of the city because we have a lot of 311s for illegal dumping. We have a lot of violence happening in this particular area. There's a, a, a rash of, of robberies. There's a lot of kids missing school. But then how do we use that to connect all of those dots? And one of the best examples I think that we have of that recently is our squeegee collaborative. 
uh, for longer than I've been alive. There were young men and young women that will be out at high, uh, high uh, traffic corners in Baltimore with squeegees trying to clean people's windows for a living, right? Imagine when I get into office and they're like, you have to cr solve this problem that's only been existing for five years. And I'm like, well, hold. People have been squeegeeing before I was alive. Like, calm down a second, right? What we did was we used data, the data of where it was happening, the data of who we were interacting with, the data from the motorists, all of those things, and then we put everybody in the room. We put the young people that squeeze you, the folks in the business community that were complaining about it, the police officers, our lawyers, our data folks, our business community, our philanthropic community, and use that to say, okay, with these young people that are out there, these are all the things that are going on. They're missing school. We got to get them back in school. They're, they're young adults. They need jobs. They're working two and three jobs and doing squeegeeing. These are the substance abuse issues. There. All of that data that we use to inform how we were going to create this squeegee uh, collaborative action plan that we have now implemented. And guess what? Oh, as one uh, business owner said to me yesterday in at lunch, like overnight, the problem went away. I literally would hear the word squeegee 75 times a day. And I haven't heard it 75 times since we start, since the initiative took effect. That's the way that we have to use data in a deep way. Um, we've talked a lot about how we're kind of using data as an administration for accountability. And you've talked about how you kind of make decisions or, or react to data to, to kind of lead you down, you know, towards questions. How do you use data to communicate outwardly with, with our residents? other stakeholders, why, why is it important to do that? I think it's important, I, I always say something very simple. A better informed citizenry is a better citizenry. The more information you give them, the less folks have the ability, especially in today's time, when we know misinformation will reign supreme if you do not give out the proper information. You have to arm them with actually what's happening in their neighborhood. And there's so many ways that we did that with our open checkbook, uh, that we had within the first 100 days of us so that folks can see who we're working with and who we're doing, who we're doing business with. We just recently uh, launched our new public safety accountability dashboard in Baltimore where for years BPD through, through the open data law has been putting out crime statistics. But mayors know that after your police department makes the arrest, most of us have nothing else to do with the criminal justice system. We now are partnering with our state's attorney and our folks in our court that you can see all of that data, not just the arrests, the cases where they go, the adjudication, every single solitary thing, so that residents have a more uh, holistic view of all the public safety issues that are going on in the city. And they can actually look at data by neighborhood. So I can click my neighborhood in Frankfurt and see, okay, Frankfurt is down X percent and violent crime this year versus last, and they can track cases by case numbers, ways that we have to do that. And just recently, our health department put out a opioid dashboard so people can see uh, our number one killer in the city and, and across the country, overdose deaths, right? So folks can start to see and we can humanize uh, the people that are going through those experiences. We are always looking forward to, and Justin and the team are always creating innovative ways for, for our residents here in Baltimore to take that data and use it for the things that they want to see as well. Because I, I, Open Baltimore used to just be a place where you could just get Excel spreadsheet after Excel spreadsheet. But now we actually have data tools that they can use and analytics that they can use that can help them as well. Um, so now turning towards our workforce, and again, around this theme of kind of in, engaging and empowering folks to use data. Um, you recently uh, announced the launch of our, our Baltimore Data Academy. So can you share a little bit about our efforts to, to um, strengthen data capabilities and, and skills of the, the city workforce, why that's important, um, how, how that's related to kind of empowering people to, to solve real problems? Yeah, I think my brother mayor from Jackson mentioned that, right? We know uh, that this can't just be about data folks and the mayor's office and the chiefs at all the different agencies doing this. We, if we're gonna be data-driven cities, everybody that works to us have to be a very vest, vested in understanding. And we know in many agencies, when you think about like our public works and transportation agencies and rec and parks, these are folks that do jobs sometimes that haven't always been in this arena and never been really uh, pushed to expand themselves. So 
through our Data Academy. We've had uh, 500 enrollments, 200 people have already already completed it. And what this is about is impacting our frontline workers and support staff who maybe have been left aside to make sure that they're bought in and they're brought up to speed on these issues as well. So we have three different uh, upcoming courses, Leading with Data, which will help managers and the leaders ask better questions and make better decisions with our data. Uh, performance management will, will build a common understanding of performance management as my administration uh, de develops agency performance plan for each agency. So it's across the board so that Transportation and public works are not talking different languages. Everyone's on the same. And our data stewardship, which will build our collective data management and responsible stewardship skills and knowledge. And of course, Justin and his team will be doing a lot of leading and a lot of tough work on that so that we're all on the same page. And this use of data, the understanding of data, doesn't just stop with our top level managers. It goes down to the folks who are doing the work each and every day. So we were lucky enough to, to participate in the first cohort of the City Data Alliance, and, and these folks are coming in to, the, to, the, to be the second cohort. Um, how would you say that the City Data Alliance really kind of um, helped us and empowered us to be part of, part of the solution? Yeah, for us, this was a blessing, 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 blessing. Uh, we were part of the procurement technical assistance tra track, and we've taken full advantage. One of the first things that I said that I was going to do when I became mayor was reform Baltimore's procurement, which hasn't been reformed since I was in sixth grade. Uh, so you know it's a long time coming. We wanted to pull a, together a cross-disciplinary a group of folks that could drive data-driven strategies that would support our ongoing reform of this procurement. With the help of the, the Harvard Government Performance Lab, we had a team uh, that developed knowledge of the best leading practices for us from around the country, probably some of you in the room, and we were empowered to really explore uh, those solutions as we work to improve that system. We know when you think about systems like procurement, right, and for us, not only do we have to do the administrative side, going through and seeing, making sure that we are getting the best system. Uh, we also have to actually, at the end of this, pass a law because our procurement reform, for some reason, our procurement is in our charter, right? So right now, I am by law required to take the lowest responsible bidder. Even if that bidder company is from New Jersey and they don't hire a bunch of folks from Baltimore and we know that that money's gonna leave, right? We are now working and using uh, uh, the help of Bloomberg and Harvard to help us reform that so that we are using the best data to have a procurement system that works for Baltimore in the 21st century and does it in a way that values our local businesses, our black owned businesses, our women owned businesses in a way that we haven't before and we're really, really grateful for that. Um, so you've been in city government 11, 12 years, longer than that, um, and you came into office about two, two and a half years ago? Has it been that long already? This is um, my 16th year in city government. 16th. Um, and we've seen just a, an acceleration uh, during your administration and, and all of these kind of data-driven efforts. Um, I'm wondering what you think is, what's next? What's next for, for Baltimore and, and how we're using data? Well, I think we know certain things. We know that AI isn't coming, it's here, right? AI is here. And we know that, like anything, uh, if put in the wrong hands, it can be used for wrong. Uh, for us, we're trying to get ahead of that and use it for things that we know are good. Uh, we tragically lost three firefighters in one day in January of 2022. And we've been working, our housing departments have been using AI to identify collapsed roofs in vacant, in vacant houses in Baltimore City, and we've been able to identify 50 of them. Uh, this came as a result of that fire where I asked my cabinet to, over a 30-day period, come up with best practices to help us deal with vacant houses. We have to be ahead of that using these tools for our own good, to make sure that we're accomplishing things at a more rapid pace, these services for, for, for our residents. Second, uh, we have to continue to grow internal data practices that continue to improve. They should never stay the same. As the world changes with data, we have to evolve. For example, we can only see the, the different stories data tells us if we slice it, if we can slice it and dice it properly. So we have to do that and do that in a way that allows us to make the most impact with the data, but don't allow yourselves to become so rigid uh, because if you do that, you're standing still. 
And when you're talking about data, and when you're talking about evolution of data, and with the growth of AI and all these things that are coming, if you're staying still, you're being passed by. And that's the best advice I can give to us all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you for, for uh, being here, spending your time with us.